I heard about this abomination that has gone on last Tuesday, apparently, in the Philippines. I basically just took the wording from a, a video by The Telegraph in the UK. But the video is something else if you want to Google it. Crowds and crowds showing up to touch or get near this statue of so-called Jesus called Black Nazarene. So they say millions of Filipinos swarmed a historic statue of Jesus Christ or so-called Jesus Christ as it paraded through Manila on Tuesday. The mass gathering of Catholics is one of the world's biggest displays of religious devotion. Well, that's, it is religious devotion. It's not Christian devotion, though. The so-called Black Nazarene statue was pulled through crowds in the first ceremony since the pandemic. The 400-year-old icon, a wooden depiction of Jesus, is said to have miraculous he healing powers, uh, and they believe touching it or attaching ropes to the float brings good fortune or heals incurable conditions. Police estimate more than 2 million people joined the festivities as attendees jostled to get to the icon. I don't know about you, but watching it made it really very real. The idolatry, the stupidity, the absolute disgust, and it just kind of reminded me of the situation when Jesus came the first time. So many people sick, so many people harassed by Satan. They don't have any understanding as to why they're not going back and looking at their sin or caring about what the word has said that they need to repent. And even though Jesus came here and said, hey, guess what? You need to repent or something worse is going to happen to you. Everybody somehow thinks that something's changed, that God gave us science and medicine and diagnoses in order to what? Medicate away what God has sent to deal with you? Because that was the understanding of people in the Bible. But for some wicked reason, people don't seem to understand it today. That video was repulsive and it was pathetic. I mean, this little statue that they're calling Jesus, they've got to nail it down there. And it just looks so pitiful and pathetic. That's what's going to heal you, some statue. And these are the same people that claim that, oh, Mary made a cast of Jesus' face. That's how we know what he looks like. Really? That's, that's what Catholics say, that... Mary made a cast of his face. That's how we know what he looks like. Okay. So Mary made a cast of his face, an image of his face for us to worship. Guess what? God is spirit. He does not want us making things to worship, images to worship, even those that we are calling Jesus. Isaiah 44 verse 6, this is what the Lord says, Israel's king and redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay it out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. All who make idols are nothing and things they treasure are worthless. Those who would speak up for them are blind. They are ignorant to their own shame. Who shapes a God and casts an idol which can profit nothing? People who do that will be put to shame. Such craftsmen are only human beings. Let them all to come together and take their stand. They will be brought down to terror and shame. The blacksmith takes a tool and works with it in the coals. He shapes an idol with hammers. He forges it with the might of his arm. He gets hungry and loses his strength. He drinks no water and grows faint. The carpenter measures with a line and makes an outline with a marker. He roughs it out with chisels and marks it with compasses. He shapes it in human form, human form in all its glory that it may dwell in a shrine. He cuts down cedars or perhaps took a cypress or oak. He let it grow among the trees of the forest or planted a pine and the rain made it grow. It is used as fuel for burning. Some of it he takes and warms himself. He kindles a fire and bakes bread, but he also fashions a God and worships it. He makes an idol and bows down to it. Half the wood he burns in the fire. Over it he prepares his meal. He roasts his meat and eats his fill. He also warms himself and says, ah, I'm warm, I see the fire. From the rest, he makes a god. 
his idol. He bows down to it and worships. He prays to it and says, save me. You're my God. They know nothing. They understand nothing. Their eyes are plastered over so they can't see. And their minds are closed so they can't understand. No one stops to think. No one has the knowledge or understanding to say, half of it I used for fuel. I even baked bread over its coals. I roasted meat and I ate. Shall I make a detestable thing from what's left? Shall I bow down to a block of wood? Such a person feeds on ashes. A deluded heart misleads him. He cannot save himself or say, is not this thing in my right hand a lie? Remember these things, Jacob, for you, Israel, are my servant. I have made you. You are my servant. Israel, I will not forget you. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing for joy, you heavens, for the Lord has done this. Shout aloud, you earth beneath. Burst into song, you mountains, you forests and all your trees. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob. He displays his glory in Israel. Do you hear how God mocks stupid people who do these things? How are you going to take some material that God sent rain to grow? This so-called God had no role in making even the tree grow from which he's made. Eyes plastered over. I mean, I thought maybe we were beyond this. It just is... But I guess, you know, it's just so stupid. Is Jesus in that statue, guys? In that cross? In that nativity? Do you know that one day I was sitting at my dining room table and I was had been reading, reading the word but, and I was writing the book and I closed up the word and I set my drink on top of the Bible and I said to God, oh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have done that with your word. And he said to me, my word is inside you. We're not even supposed to take the Bible, a, a physical book, and act like that's an image. He was correcting me from treating the physical book as an image, as an idol. You understand you could do that? And that what he said to me was correct, that his word is in me. Because I can read words. And listen, theologians have been proving this for a long time. That you can le- read a bunch of words in the Bible and not understand any of it. It can be completely meaningless. So is it the book or is it the spirit in you that is ministering that word to you? Hello, you can take anything and turn it into an idol. Be careful of what is in your heart. Please discern this message with God.